finally, I found a rescue ace duelist, and uh, it looks like Vanquish Soul wanted a piece of this as well. Of course, make sure you guys smash up and crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more tournament data. All right, so we're going to be starting things off with the Archangel Games case tournament here. And, uh, well, this is an interesting pie chart. We had two purely decks in the top eight. Hmm. You know, it didn't win. <laughs> is that is that what you want to hear? Oh, yeah, purely such a good deck. Where's Cash Tier at, by the way? Where's all this Tier Elements hype that we've had out here? Hmm. Now, we did have two Vanquish Soul variants in the top cut, which, you know, I'm going to say it. I think it's very interesting to see that Vanquish Soul... I think we're at a place right now in the meta where the meta is still trying to, well, obviously figure out what it's trying to do. But Vanquish Soul has found its way in here as a deck that, you know, people forgot actually existed. And that means that they can kind of take advantage of that. Plus, I mean, do you know what to do against this deck? Do you know the combos to break when playing against Vanquish Soul? Because I guarantee you, if you don't, or, you know, you're like, ah, it's just, it's just discount cast you're putting the Arise Heart on the field. Yeah, sometimes. It is, but the deck is still incredibly good. Uh, we also had, once again, both of our Rescue Ace Duelists finally showed up here. Now, if you don't know what you're doing against this deck or, you know, what choke point you should do, probably stopping the Turbulence is the best play. I don't know, you know, ask somebody else. Maybe, well, if they, what if they did the, the, the protection play, Rob? What if they got the Mud Dragon? You know, what am I supposed to do about that? just get good. I don't know. Um, but that's what we're kind of looking at right now. I'm happy to see the Rescue Ace did perform up to this tournament, and I think that's a pretty good indicator for the future here. And then we had one Labyrinth. Okay, Labyrinth Mommy's doing her thing. Okay. And then we had Dragon Link out here as well. Hmm, sus. Um, no Infernoble, no Cash Terra. None of the, uh, the crazy things that, you know, people want, but this is an interesting breakdown. And I think you'll see more interesting things to come when you get to these deck lists. Let's pass on over to them. All right, so winning our event here is none other than Vanquish Soul. You know, we're on triple cash tier Fenrir. We, we did see earlier in the week that uh, there was a variation that was just playing two Fenrir, one Rise Heart, you know, to be able to toggle. Um, I think that's fine, honestly. Like, these ratios, this is going to be your best thing. We are playing Bice deals on this. Uh, there is no Small World package in here. Now, I do like what the Small World build can do in terms of bridging the gap, but don't really need it. And then, of course, we're main decking the triple copies of the Solemn Steve Reich in here. Don't underestimate this card. I think a lot of people look at the meta right now and they're like, huh, you know, most traps are genuinely bad. No, this is a pretty good blowout card. And if your opponent is, you know, fully playing into this and they're, they don't expect us, congratulations, you win. And of course, we are citing TC Boo down here. I'm so happy to see that TC Boo has stuck around. Now, interesting note here, this build is not playing the zoo package for the immediate climb up into the format Zeus. Um, I guess they feel that they didn't need it. So that's, that's a first immediate interesting thing to see there. Next up here, we have our purely duelist. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, we're on double leap. Once again, I've said this in a lot of these videos, but uh, three leap can feel a little bit clunky. Uh, this build is also playing two copies of the Aspirly Nor. Uh, to me, this is interesting. So many duelists have been pushing for, you know, just a one, and it's worked out. So to see that this is, you know, the extension number is pretty good. We're also playing Grave of the Super Ancient Organism here. Gonna make sure that Cash Deer can't actually get the chance to play the game. Uh, hand traps, I mean, the standard six, and then the drolls, and the moonlit chills. Uh, we are not playing any Nibiru's, which we'd seen in some other tournaments where Nibiru was interchangeable with the Droll and Lockbird. It's going to kind of come down to what you're expecting your local environment to kind of come in with. So, I mean, you very obviously can rotate tech choices. And they had Ghost Belts and Curry Karas down here to kind of curve out the rest of their matchups. But it feels like this variant was very, very prepared for what it needed to do. And I think that's, that's good. Next up here. Hey, hey, hey. It's the Turbulence. Wham, wham, wham. Triple Emergency, the Triple Hydrant, all the good cards in the world to get the full set combo line to laugh at your opponent. And this build is also playing Super Polymerization in the main deck. So if you are like, hey, you know, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna attempt to set up some crazy monster. This deck is so prepared for this meta that they're even playing the Dragon Knight Draco Quest. When was the last time that you saw Draco Knight Draco Quest being remembered? It's a Dragon Synchro Monster plus a Warrior Monster. So 
while you might be looking at like how some of these crazy inboards are going right now, if they see the super poly and they get the chance to make this on you, you pick up your cards and you call it a day because you just got destroyed by rescue ace. And that's, uh, that's what I like to see. Some good consistency down here. Good stuff. Next up here is our other Vanquish Soul deck. So I can't believe both of these made top four. It's actually so impressive. I see that we are relying on summon limits here to kind of detour and punish the opponent, which is good. Um, the Floodgates are one of the strong suits of this deck. And I would almost say that this is as good as there can only be one for some of these decks because the immediate value of two monsters hitting the field and then you're just like, nope, no more. Stop! Halt! No more uh, fun allowed for you. Now we are seeing that we are playing the zoo package down here. And they're also playing Ptolemaeus as well. I'm glad to see that this build decided that it wanted to explore some more of the other things, but on the opposite side of the equation here, you know, the build that didn't end up winning the tournament did get the chance to shape up and show you a different side of things. So that's, I would say, two interesting different methods of things that you can pressure on the opponent here and be able to take advantage of for the meta. So keep that in mind. Um, those differences in ratios is very, very good. Uh, next up here, ha, ah, there's my dragon pendulum monster of the expensive. You know, I will say that it's very hit or miss these days if you see the Chaos Emperor dragon pendulum actually being a metagame defining card. I am extremely happy to see that we do have another build that is playing this because this is one of my favorite cards in the game. Uh, not too bad. We are playing the one Gamma and the one Driver. Uh, we're not playing Deltas, Betas, game, or, uh, you know, Epsilons, none of the other fancy stuff. They're just like, you know, if we see the Driver in our opening hand, I don't care. Uh, it's, it's not like you can't really recycle it back either way. Uh, you can get some very interesting value trees down here for some of the little sub extensions for this. So that's definitely interesting. And of course, we are getting the chance to side skill trade. Hey, if it's not banned, you may as well play it, right? The sooner that, you know, you can push for this card to get removed from the game. It's not doing a lot right now, but it's still <laughs> a deck like this being able to set up a big board of, you know, monsters and flip skill drain going to be a bad time. Hey, it is Labyrinth. Okay, so we're, what is up with Labyrinth these days exploring the super poly routes? I think that this has been very interesting to kind of see. There's the Boralode Furious Dragon. See that we are playing the Skull Wagon for the Spell and Trap Pop. It's been a little bit more of a norm as of late. Uh, and then... We're playing Destruction Potion. Select one monster you control, destroy it, and gave land points equal to its attack. We're playing this for time. What? <laughs> it is a normal trap card that you can set. If you think that there's going to be a situation that you need to gain life points, you can actually flip Destruction Potion. Wow, that is actually hilarious. Um, <laughs> I, 9 out of 10, I don't recommend, but you know what? It worked out. That's actually amazing. Okay, sure. Next up here, we have our other Purely Duelist. Uh, once again, the heavy board breakers that some of these builds are playing. I mean, obviously, three books with three Dark Ruler No Mores are going to be very important to make sure that you can play the game. And if you can't roll out any of these board breakers, I, I feel like you're going to be in an absolutely craptastic position. Uh, we are flipping up the good old summon limit to make sure that the opponent can't play the game. Like I said earlier, I think in some cases, well, you know, TC Boo is an incredibly good card this format. Um, you know, this deck's not going to get the chance to play it, for sure. Yeah, imagine a purely player locking themselves into their one very tight monster. It'd be a real shame if I just locked myself out of the game. Um, that's not going to be the case. We're also playing the one leap. Um, tech choices is actually fine. Uh, the one is purely Nor. Once again, the one is dominating. Two is you want to, maybe you had an extra tech slot or something and you were worried. And there's that slacker magician that we talked about in the past that was going up. Yes, a nice little thing for you to get the chance to, to be able to secret village your opponent. But there's no secret village here. And our last variant here, does this look familiar? Well, this is the exact same list that we saw from our third place duels. Both of our Rescue Ace players opted to take the same build here and perform out of the tournament. So both Rescue Ace duels were so confident in their choices that they mirrored each other down to the card and they had the chance to both top the case tournament. That's what you like to see. Uh, when, you, when you're when you 100% in your ratios and you know what you're doing feels confidently amazing, congratulations, you end up seeing Ws like this. So that is our breakdown out of Archangel Games. 
case tournament. Please, if you comment down below, tell me what you guys think, and I will see your beautiful faces back here later in the day, guys. Peace out. Patrons, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.